If you're interested in seeing how this works, this is a how-to video to making this happen. In this video, I'm featuring a 1978 Evinrude 6 horsepower, but pretty much any 6 horsepower with this type of linkage will work for this application. The key component to this build is this unit right here. It's called a linear actuator. This has a two inch throw on it. Uh, I picked it off of Amazon for about 45 bucks. Now this is not a plug and play ready to go bolt on kit. You are going to have to build some of this yourself. First thing I had to do was modify this arm from stock. Originally, off of this plate here, there's a bit of a nub that sticks up. I ground that nub flat, flush with this plate here. And then I drilled a hole through the plate where the nub used to exist. I needed the threads to mount this actuator to. I ran a bolt through there. I've got a nut on the back side of that, so essentially I have a stud running through this. I've got a piece of old fuel line here, just kind of as a anti-vibration component. And then I jam nut the top of this so that it doesn't come apart. The other half of the bracket I made, I made out of a piece of angle iron and drilled some holes that actually mate with holes that are already in this unit here. Again, I welded a bolt on the end of this angle iron. I have an old fuel line as an anti-vibration component. This is the linear actuator. Essentially made a stud all the way through that and a jam nut on either side of that to keep that all locked down. Now this is a two inch linear actuator which means it has two inches of throw here because of my positioning here where my mounting point is at to here I actually only have one and five eighths length of throw before I run out of throw in the linkage for the motor if I overextend this I will rip this off completely this actuator is good for 225 pounds. It'll break everything off of this if I'm not careful. So what I did in this particular case was I took this tube apart and there are two limit switches on the inside of this and I modified where the limit switch was at so I, I can only get one and five eighths inch worth of throw out of it for this particular application. However, with that all being said, the other thing you can do would be when you fabricate this bracket here, extend this bracket outward a bit further and perhaps even forward a bit further and you can change the throw length with the bracket without having to modify the limit switches inside of this. Whatever you do during this build, you have to make sure that you don't overextend your linkage. If you do, you'll break everything and it'll be the end of it. So just keep that in mind. As far as routing the wire, it's completely up to you however you would like to do it. What I did was I ran it up underneath the lower cowling. There's a soft plug in the lower part of that cowling. And I ran it inside of the motor compartment. In here, I have also tapped into the kill switch for this motor so that I have kill switch controls up at the helm. So out of that wiring harness that I showed on the other side, it comes through the cowling and out here. Previous owner to this motor had a kill switch drilled out here. I removed the kill switch and just used the hole to run my wires through. 
I'm using a four prong trailer harness to transfer all of these controls up to the helm. The reason I have this the way it is, is because I can still take this motor off potentially and use it as a regular tiller motor minus this control without actually dismantling anything too heavily. So what I've got here, two of these wires are for the linear actuator to extend it and retract it and the other two wires I have wired all the way back and spliced into my kill switch. Therefore I have my kill switch up at the helm. The idea being that if I'm trolling and I snag something up at the helm, I can kill the motor and stop everything. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to disassemble this linear actuator. I don't know if all linear actuators are going to be put together the same way. I will put a link to this particular actuator in the descriptions. So when we get started here, I've already taken out the screws so I don't bore you guys to death. But there's a screw here, here, one here, and one here. I've already removed these. So at this point, I'm going to pull this top cap off and remove it from the shaft. At this point, inside of here, be kind of careful because there's a bunch of limit switches and linkage. Now, originally, this piece of plastic here, this tab coming off of here, is what hits these two limit switches and limits its range. What I've done here is I drilled and screwed in a screw on the tip of that limit switch stopper there so that that limit switch hits that screw before it hits this plastic. This was a two inch linear actuator. Essentially it's an inch and five eighths linear actuator at this point. Keep in mind also that you can turn these it's your output shaft and it's threaded on this piece of plastic here this is simply just to get you where you need to go if you need a little bit longer a little bit shorter you can adjust that but these limit switches are what determine your range on here so to put it back all together it's the same as it was taking it apart. I'm going to slide this cover back over everything and once that covers on I'm going to slide this cap back on and tighten everything down. It's worth it to note that I've taken this lower part apart. There's uh, gears in here. Transfer the power from the motor through a set of gears up this drive shaft. <clears throat> I've taken this all apart and ran RTV silicone around everything in an effort to try to seal as much of this up as I can so that water doesn't get into anything. Uh, I've been running this linear actuator for four years now and I run it hard during fishing season. Uh, this is the first time I've had it apart in four years and I don't have any water coming out of it. There's, you know, this has still got grease on the shaft everything looks pretty good so so far four years forty five dollar actuator I'm pretty happy with it and when you go to install this you're not gonna have the clearance for this motor to rest in there like that this motor has to be outside of the motor once you get your brackets all built and put in place You'll want to mount this, but you'll want the actuator to its furthest reach that the limit switches in here will allow. And you will want your throttle maxed out. And what we're doing here is we're setting this shaft depth 
so that we don't overextend our throttle linkage here and break things off. So what we're going to do is we're going to test it. Just kind of look at it here. And that is too far. I can get it back here, but I can't get it on here. So I'm going to turn this screw in a few turns until I can get that to rest in there and nest nicely. So what this does for me is this actuator, because of the limit switches, cannot extend any further. The throttle right now is as far out as it can go. So that keeps me from breaking any linkage. At this point, I'll go ahead and put all my hardware back on here and bolt it into place. Also, I've tucked the wire down and underneath. Doesn't matter, you could go up and over the top if you'd like, your preference. Once you've got your unit completely mounted and you're pretty happy with it, I would strongly suggest hanging out back here and getting your buddy or your kids or somebody to go run the controls up at the helm. Carefully extend this out when you get close to your limit. Just have them kind of bump the trigger. Make sure it can extend all the way out as far as it needs to and come back as far as it needs to without binding anything. That's kind of the beauty of using a screw inside on that limit switch. It's because if it needs to be adjusted, I can get back inside here and turn it in or out, which would effectively change the throw of the linkage for the actuator. Um, if it is binding at all, just keep tinkering with it a little bit between turning this screw and messing with that limit switch screw that I installed. You can dial this thing in to where this thing will only run the length of the throw that you need for this motor. All right, we are up here at the helm. This switch and this switch control that kicker. This switch is just an on off and it is tied directly into the kill switch on the motor. It doesn't matter which direction you wire those wires in from here to the wires in the kill switch and the motor. This is just a ground, but it's grounded back through itself. I actually ran wires all the way from this switch all the way back to that motor and that four plug-in trailer hitch wiring harness. This switch here is a different story. This is on, off, on. This is called a momentary switch. When it goes up, it's spring loaded, comes back to zero, neutral, down, springs back up. So on, off, on. I'm gonna show you guys how to wire this with a linear actuator, but I'm not going to do it underneath the dash because you guys won't be able to see anything about what's going on. Now, here's the wiring diagram for our switch. And this is our switch. Notice how it has six lugs on the back. Now this is called a double throw, double pull switch. You can get these in different versions. Momentary has a switch come up and then springs back to the off position or maintained which means that you turn the switch and it stays there until you manually put it back in the off position. This isn't the switch I used on my build. I personally like the momentary switch because it kind of acts as a throttle bump um, as opposed to throwing it and then trying to remember to kick it back and playing with my throttle too much. The uh, momentary part of this switch as I'm using it on my boat. When I flick it like that, I get about 0.2 mile an hour difference every time I bump it. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0.6. It's about how sensitive it is for changing the throttle on that motor. It's up to you, your preference, whichever which way you want to go. Momentary is the way I went, but either way, the wiring diagram for this switch will be the same. 
feel free to screenshot this for later use. But what we've got is on the back of this switch, the six lugs, we've got our positive coming in to our top lug. What we're going to do is also run a jumper from this onto this terminal here, from here to here. On the other side, we have a negative, and it's the same thing. We're running it into this top left corner, and then we're going to jump it to here. So we're running in, and we're going to jump it to this corner. Now on this lug here, this is going to go out to the positive side of the wire on the actuator, or the red wire coming out of the actuator for this side. This side is coming out to the negative side or the black wire on your actuator. Feel free to take a screenshot. It's also worth noting that on my build, my positive, I ran directly from the battery for this build. The reason being, I didn't want it to come off the ignition because while I'm trolling, my main motor is in the off position and I don't want to have the key in the on position just to throttle my kicker motor. So I ran a hot wire directly from that to the switch. These linear actuators pull about three amps max. So you want to probably put a 5 amp breaker or fuse in line on your positive side before you get to the switch. It's your discretion, but I believe that that would be a safe precaution. Now for the kill switch, the back of the switch will only have two prongs here and here. It's a simple on off switch. That's it. When you flip the switch, it makes a connection between these two points. When it's in the off position, you have no connection. We're just going to run these wires right out and splice them right into the kill switch wires on the motor. It doesn't matter which orientation you have them at all. There's no jumpers between these two. You just run them out to your kill switch wires. The kill switch works by grounding out the ignition. As soon as these two points come in contact, either via the switch here or the switch on the motor, it grounds out the ignition system and it shuts it off. That's why there's no polarity here. It doesn't matter. So don't get too hung up on that. Now to complete this build, I have a steering link connecting my main motor to my kicker. So from the helm position, I can control the throttle up and down. I can control when the motor turns off and I just use my helm to steer my kicker while I'm driving it. The only thing I need to come back here for at this point is to pull the start rope to begin fishing. I hope this helps someone. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for your time.